Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're glad that you're joining us again this evening. We're glad that there are people like you that are interested in the issues that are happening in our cities. Because it is important for good government for there to be a flow back and forth with information between our city councils and mayors, the people that live in the city, the city staff. And we're happy that you want to know more about it. Now we're moving into election time and there are several cities in our area that are having elections so for the next three times that we meet we're going to be having people on from that are <coughs> candidates from all of the eight cities that are running elections and on November 6th you'll be if you're in one of the eight cities in CCX's viewing area with an election you'll be voting for city councils and some mayors and we will encourage you as we go through a lot of candidates and let them a chance to tell you about themselves so it'll help you in determining who to vote for, we encourage you to take down their names and their emails and their phone numbers and if you've got concerns, be in contact with them. And we encourage you to take, if, you, if your city is represented, take down their name and email and if you have any questions about issues or concerns that you have, be sure to share that information with them. We're very happy tonight to welcome a group of people that are very busy out campaigning. Uh, Ned Carroll from Plymouth, Therese Kreiser from Crystal, Don Baumgartner from Brooklyn Center, and Larry Stelmack from Osseo. So we're glad that all of you have joined us tonight. And we want to give those of you out there some information about these people so that you can use that in judging who you want to vote for. We'll start out with Ned Carroll. And I'll let you take a little time to tell people a little bit about yourself and your background and how that's prepared you to be on your city council. Great. Well, thank you very much. And also let me thank you for providing this service. It's a wonderful public service uh -huh. to, the, to the communities. And I appreciate the time and effort that you put into it, as well as your husband, Andy, who's, oh, who's behind the camera. Right, great. Busy working. <clears throat> yeah, so um, anyway, about me is that I've been on, I'm on the city council now. Right. I'm at large, which means I represent the entire city. We have a council of seven, the mayor, two at large seats and mm -hmm. four ward seats. Right. So uh, my wife and I have been in, in living in Plymouth for 24 years ah. and are raising our three daughters here. And as a result, we've been very involved in the community with volunteer activities, the school, church, um, right. sports activities, other activities. Um, yeah. And for example, I've been, I'm on the Wyzetta Girls Basketball Association, uh -huh. where i am uh, been a longtime coach as well as director of the rec program. Uh -huh. So that's, that's one thing. Now, in terms of the city, um, I f first started out being Plymouth's representative to the Shingle Creek Watershed Management okay. Commission. Right. Thereafter, I was uh, appointed to the Parks and Rec Commission, uh -huh. where I became chair and was chair for a long time. Uh -huh. And then uh, I ran for city council and, and got elected at large four years ago. So we've been very involved in the community with our kids and and our and other organizations. Right. So um, it's just been an honor to serve. And then I asked you to think about some issues that you'd like to share with our audience, especially those in Plymouth, that are of concern to you during this election cycle. Sure. So what would you like to start with? Well, first of all, you know, in door knocking and things, what I'm hearing is that keep Plymouth the way it is. It's a great city. Keep it great. Ah. It's a good quality of life. People want to maintain it. Uh -huh. So a couple of things that, along, that go towards that is maintaining good city services, right. getting bang for the buck, and also keeping up the city in terms of infrastructure, streets, and then our parks. We have an award-winning park system, uh -huh. and um, we want to keep it that way. It's a great asset to the community. It's also really good for attracting employers oh, right. and, and bringing employers to the area because um, it's a great amenity for folks to have. And were there any other issues that you'd like to share with the voters out there? Well, I tell you, um, we've been working on um, some uh, city improvements. Okay. We had the Plymouth Ice Center, which was oh, yeah. which was updated, and it needed new uh, uh, refrigerant system, which was done. And then we uh, converted uh, two of the sheets to 
um, NHL size as oh, opposed to Olympic size. Right. So it, not only does it is it more popular, but it really cuts down on on maintenance costs oh. and cost of operation because uh -huh. you, have, you have that much less ice right. to to maintain. So we've done that. And that. Then the next step is the Plymouth Creek Center, which is oh, at least yeah. 20, 20 years old. It's essentially the community center. Right. And it is just busting at the seams. We've grown quite a bit. We're the seventh largest city in Minnesota. And um, just there's so much programming there. And there's just not enough room for everybody. Uh -huh. So we're looking at expanding that. Uh -huh. um, and so we'll see what happens. We've gone through a community engagement process to solicit I information, feedback, and what the community wants in terms of that right. space and what, right. we, what we should do with it. So it's very important to the council uh -huh. to have that community input, and we're so glad to have gotten it. Right. Then, then I asked you to think about why should somebody out there in Plymouth, when they come into the voting booth, why should they check your name? Well, because, uh, frankly, I have the leadership that counts in the experience uh -huh. that matters. Right. And so I've uh, been involved in the community for a long time, uh -huh. as I said, and I'm an attorney by training. Okay. So I think I bring something different to the council. Sure. Um, I'm the only one with a legal background uh -huh. on the council. And I think it's important to get different perspectives. Oh, it's important. Right. It's important to have diversity on the council. And I think there's diversity can come in lots of different uh, forms and right. functions. So professionally, I think that's one mm -hmm. one way it can happen. So that's that's another reason. Okay, good. Right. Thank you Thank very you. much. Now let's move on to Therese Kaiser, who's from Crystal and Board One. Ward One, because we want to make sure we're focusing you in on the people that are going to be looking at your name on the ballot. First, tell them a little bit about your background with Crystal and kind of how that prepares you to be on your council. Okay. Well, as, as you know, my name is Therese Kaiser. Um, I have lived in Crystal for 25 years. Ah. Hard to believe I'm, I'm that many years now. <laughs> um, my husband and I have raised our children in uh -huh. Crystal. It's a great community. I've been involved in our community in many different ways. Ah. Um, over the years, depending on where my, my kids were, I've um, been a den leader for Cub Scouts. Uh -huh. I've served on um, the uh, Board for uh, three different nonprofits. Uh -huh. um, I've been a guardian ad litem through Hennepin County. Um, currently, I am on the community board for the New Hope Y, and oh. I am president of the Crystal Historical Society. Uh -huh. um, things that I think are great about Crystal is we've got wonderful neighborhoods. Uh, we've got great parks and green spaces. Um, and we've got a unique business climate, I mm -hmm. think. Um, some things I would like to see happen in Crystal. Um, I would like to see s more business development. Okay. I look at towns uh, like Robbinsdale is a similar size. Oh, right. And Hopkins is a similar size, mm -hmm. and both of their downtowns are just exploding and ah. as far as new businesses. And I think they both have to do with um, the light rail coming through, the northwest, oh, the blue right. line coming through right. Robbinsdale, which will also go through Crystal, and the southwest line going through right. um, Hopkins. So I would like to see Crystal take advantage of this opportunity and see what we can do right. as, as a community and, and to generate some business excitement in Crystal. So. And are there some other issues that you've been talking to as you're out campaigning and door knocking? Um, what I hear from most people is that Crystal is just a lovely community. Um, and it um, some, some things that, that are very exciting right now, um, Crystal is in the process of revamping their parks. Um, ah. Welcome Park uh, is getting a, 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 a rehab, I guess, as we, that started this summer. Next summer, uh -huh. um, they are going to completely redo Becker Park. Ah. And that's kind of the showpiece of Crystal. Oh, that is right. up on the, on the north side of Crystal. That's where the big festival is in our summer. They've got um, a, a stage for 
uh, community theater right. and music. Um, and when the blue line comes through, that will be where the station is very close to Becker oh, Park. Right, right. So um, that's some exciting things that uh -huh. I think are happening in Crystal. And are there issues that have come up while you're door knocking that you hadn't thought of, but other people have brought ideas to you? Um, I get a lot of questions. We're part of the Robbinsdale School District. That, right. they, there's a referendum. I get a lot of questions oh, about right, the referendum right. that um, is being put before the voters this election cycle. So that's the thing that comes up mostly. Um, I hear over and over again what a great place it is, and it's really low crime, and people have talked about that. Um, other than that, city council does things like keeping the city running efficiently. Right, right. So maintaining our streets, getting our streets plowed in the winter, um, and dealing with issues that pop up that way, the municipality issues. Is there anything <clears throat> new that you think you want to bring into Crystal? I'd like to see some more business development ah. in Crystal, and I'd like to see some excitement generated. Sure. And so. then why don't you tell the people out in Crystal in Ward 1, why should they vote for you on November 6th? The people, the, I would uh, appreciate people's support. I've been very, very involved in our community mm -hmm. in lots of different ways, and um, I think it's a great place, and I want to participate. I've never served on the council before, uh -huh. but I would really like to. Uh -huh. um, I would like to partic participate this way. Right. So Now, <coughs> moving on to Dan Baumgartner from Brooklyn Center. I'll let you start out. You already know what I'm going to ask. To let, okay, let people uh, know where you're coming from and why it's important. I'm Don Baumgartner from Brooklyn Center, running for City Council. I've been a homeowner in Brooklyn Center for over 22 years. I've got a degree in law enforcement. I'm on huh. the Brooklyn Center Charter Commission. I've been an election judge. I can't be one this year because I'm on the ballot. <laughs> right. Um, problems we, we have in Brooklyn Center when I've been out campaigning talking to people a lot of people are concerned about uh, crime and public oh, safety okay. uh, issues um, I'm a small business owner in Brooklyn Center I'm, I'm now retired I'm concerned about uh, I'm a concerned citizen and I'd like to help solve Brooklyn Center's problems by serving on the, on the City Council the top two issues uh, while campaigning, uh, crime and public safety issues, uh, there's large numbers of people that congregate around stores and businesses. Ah, uh, right. The transit center, gas stations, they, they also have panhandlers. Um, and the other thing they, they talk about is the high, high property taxes. And we have virtually the highest property taxes in, the, in, the, in Hennepin County and virtually the, the lowest home values in Hennepin County. People want to feel safe in their community, and uh, I'm a, a law and order candidate, and I want to work with the police and fire departments in order to, to resolve these issues. Um, another thing, uh, the uh, people want to, uh, they want to see uh, Highway 252 uh, Redesigned so that it's a safer, safer area. Ah. Uh -huh. um, so, but I'd like to see uh, our taxes and our funds go to roads, bridges, and infrastructure, <coughs> and especially on Highway 252, and uh, put in dedicated bus lanes. I think more uh, natural gas, propane, electric, and hy hybrid buses should be added instead of L L light rail transit, because it would cost a fraction, uh -huh. fraction of the cost. Yeah, that's been a big debate in that area, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, I'd like to, well, as far as... Uh, um, can I finish it up now? Okay, sure. Why should people cast their vote for me? I'm a longtime resident, homeowner in Brooklyn Center. I'm uh, retired from a small business that I've had in Brooklyn Center. I have time now to dedicate to making improvements in Brooklyn Center. I'm not your typical politician, as you can probably notice by the way I'm, I'm 
making some mistakes here. Well, I uh, think everybody does, the politicians included. <laughs> yeah. This is not a stepping stone for me to run for a higher office. I have a lot of life experience to draw on uh, in order to make good decisions that will help everyone. I want to see Brooklyn Center become a business-friendly environment, which will uh, get more businesses to come in to pay a, pay a higher share of the, the tax burden, uh -huh. which will lower the tax burden on the, on the Brooklyn Center homeowners. Great. Right. Okay, then let's move on to Larry Stelmack, giving us a little background information and how it affects being on the council. Thank you again. As Ned said, you know, really appreciate that you do this for mm -hmm. us. This is my first time on the show. Uh, a little bit about me. <clears throat> I've been married to my wife for about 16 years, which uh -huh. is about as long as we've lived in the town of Osseo. Uh -huh. We have twin nine-year-olds and uh -huh. our surprise one-year-old. Thought we were done. <laughs> Life worked out a little differently. Okay. Uh, in the town of Osseo, I do currently serve on the city council, uh, as well on right. different boards and commissions, uh, the EDA, Park and Rec Public Safety, uh, just to name a few. Um, I am a small business owner that I uh, do on my own time. I'm based out of Osseo as well as uh, serve in a local nonprofit. I uh, served in the Marine Corps for uh, eight and a half years. And um, like you, Ned, I, I spent some time on the Watershed Commission as well. Oh, well right. It was very interesting because Osseo sits between two different mm -hmm. districts, so I sat in two, two seats, believe that or not. Um, other than that, I, I guess before I was on the council, I wanted to understand how municipal government works. Ah. So I put some time in on the Planning Commission and the Economic Development Authority uh, just to see if I could survive government or <laughs> if it would survive me. Right. And it seemed to work out well. And I'm running for re-election. And then amongst those issues or a different one, what do you think it, the top three issues are for Osseo people, the, your residents, what are they concerned about during this election cycle? Uh, during this cycle? Yeah. That's a great way to frame the question because those top three issues can change from oh. season to season, of right, course. Right, right. Uh, right now there's, uh, there's a big drive to support public safety, ah. uh, which is counterbalanced by the big drive to make sure that we keep taxes as low and tolerable ah. as possible. So uh, we're working right now, we're in discussions on the current budget to add another full-time officer and working with the financing of the part-time budget. Um, we're hoping that we can pull that off with uh, a nominal tax increase currently. Uh, a lot of people when they come to town, they say they feel that sense of community. So oh, for us, preserving important. that sense of community is, is key when we do anything whether it's our policing, a community policing style, right. when it's uh, bringing new development to town, having the right companies come to town so it fits that microculture, if uh -huh. you will, over 0.7 of a square mile right. of Osseo. Everything has to, has to fit just right. Um, the one that I'd like to focus on a little bit is, sure. is our sense of community. Um, one, of the, one of my favorite things about Osseo is, I think people can feel it when they come to town, with us. Uh, every, every city has its charm. Um, I'm obviously very proud of, of my city. Houses there don't stand, tend to stay on the market that long. Uh -huh. um, I like the fact that we're working on our infrastructure because that mm -hmm. way we are going to have a little more community engagement as we have more sidewalks through town. Right. Through years, uh, people had removed sidewalks. You know, back in the old days, <laughs> nobody, nobody would question if you took your sidewalk out. Now that's right. obviously changed. Um, we're trying to have a safe streets where people can walk around. So whether you're a uh, two-year-old walking with mom or you're in one of the assisted living communities that we have in town, you have a sidewalk to be on. You don't have to uh -huh. worry about being uh, down in the street. So um, I like supporting that night to unite that we were able oh, to, right. you know, through the legislature, uh, have different funding sources for that. We had a blast in the city. Uh -huh. uh, people from all four corners could come and intermingle and, and again, just drive that sense of community. And you had that in your Central Park? We did, oh. we did. We had it in Bourbon Park right next to City Hall. Oh, well, that's kind of a fun way to do it. And it was fantastic. Oh. And it, was, it was led, uh, the initiative was spearheaded by uh, one of the officers on our law enforcement team. Uh -huh. But the community, the volunteers just gathered around it and they mm -hmm. really made the magic happen. And then why should people in Osceola vote you back into a City Council again? 
come um, November 6th. Thank you very much. I, I think, um, you know, having served before can be a blessing and a curse because there's that record behind you, of right, course, right? right. So um, I'd like to think that my record will show that I work very hard to keep taxes low. Uh -huh. I vote, vote yes every year on a budget just because it's what you do to be 5-0. Um, I also, when developers want to come or issues come up, I put a lot of time and research in. Ah. Um, I'm talking to the residents or the businesses that are affected mm -hmm. by the issues, reaching out to them. And I, when I feel there are other positions being represented, I want to make sure that I'm listening. Right. Because just because I found certain truths means there's still plenty for me to learn. And I've always tried to have that balance. Ah, right. Uh, and all conversations be respectful. and. Um, Certainly, I'm a candidate that will return your phone call. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> so that's important. Right. It's a very important thing. The emails and uh, the phone calls going back out, I think that communication piece uh, is really important. People want to be heard. You're there to represent them. And we're in that large city. Um, so there's 2,500 people that I work for. Uh-huh. Right. And I'm going to ask, all of you to think about an issue that often comes up when people are talking about cities is how does the city government and the city staff keep in conversation so the people over here that are residents feel like they're being heard what are some ways that are that's happening in your city or that you'd like to see happen you know um, what is your city currently doing or what might you want to branch out into we will uh, actually give out our administrator's phone number and email huh? to people, okay. and we will carry that bucket of water. Um, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I'd love to hear how the other cities work as well, but uh, the administrator or the manager, they certainly love to hear from okay. the council members, in my opinion. Sure. But the resident's voice is very powerful in Osseo. So I encourage people certainly to email me so I can follow up, but oh, right. reaching out right. to our, our city administrator who's very passionate about serving his residents as well. Okay, some of the other cities. I've seen in Crystal um, a big effort as far as communicating with the residents. Okay. Um, they have started uh, Coffee with a Cop. I think that's uh -huh. once a month. Um, some of our officers will uh, set up shop at a coffee shop or a McDonald's. Uh -huh. um, other things they've done, they've re completely revamped the city's website and it's much uh -huh. more us user friendly. Um, there are notices that go out on nextdoor.com. I don't know if anyone else oh, is familiar right. mm -hmm. with that. And uh, Facebook notices. So uh, that's how I have seen in, in, in maybe in the last year to 18 months that Crystal is making a, a big effort as far as making the city government more accessible and just letting people know what's going oh, on. Oh, right, it, right. It's, it's been a big improvement. Oh, that sounds interesting. And in terms of Plymouth, um, the council and the city manager as well as uh, the directors of the departments all work very well together and the, the city manager and the department heads will reach out and they'll communicate with ah, the residents so when right. there's been someone who has a concern they certainly uh, include the council but right. um, city staff uh, the, the department heads and the city manager will get actively involved uh -huh. in it and so it helps it helps resolve the concern and it and so we all work cooperatively and collegially to uh, together to resolve any, any right. concern that comes up and then an, another issue that cities have dealt with and used and people have varying opinions is tax increment financing maybe we could get a little Oh, did we get that from Brooklyn Center yet? Not about uh, about yeah. the yeah. The, uh, I'd, I'd like to see uh, the city council meetings. Uh, the citizens be able to come there and respectfully give their input during the, the city uh, council uh, meetings. Currently, they can only do that in the fifteen right, minutes before right. beforehand. So I would like to see that happen. Uh -huh. As long as everybody's being respectful, right? I would right. Like, I would like to see that happen. Okay, then let me back up just a little bit. That uh, have you talk about the tax increment financing, maybe how it's been used, and if you are in favor, maybe you want some controls. What's happening in your city? Well, in terms of Plymouth, uh, Plymouth has been very uh, judicious in its uh -huh. use of, of TIF. Uh, it's a useful tool to have, and we're currently using it um, on the new Axis Apartments, okay. which is at 55 and 169 
and um, there it was used because the soil's a real challenge, ah. and so it was used to help uh, remediate those. Okay. And also, I think in exchange that um, the city was able to get 20% of the units huh? affordable, which oh, is very important. important. I mean, affordability uh, in Plymouth and the state, and frankly, the nation is a huge issue. It's oh, it become is. an even You're larger right. issue. So we've we've used it judiciously, mm -hmm. and we will use it ju judiciously. Um, and that's how we. It's, uh -huh. it's a very helpful tool to have. Okay. Anything. Brooklyn Center has a uh, a lot of open land available uh -huh. for business development. Uh, businesses have moved out, gone bankrupt, right. been eminently domained, and uh, I, I would like to see uh, tax and increment mm -hmm. financing to help bring some businesses in. Right. And that, but on the other hand, I'd also like to see a business friendly environment. Oh, right. That's in important Brooklyn too. Center, so right. these businesses want to come there and stay there mm -hmm. and flourish. Well, I want to thank all of you for taking time out of what I know is a busy schedule this time of year. And we'll encourage those of you out there, be sure to be in contact with the, your person that's running on the city. We'll ask you to tune in next week because we'll have another group of candidates. Bye. Our city's governments need your involvement. The eight cities that I mentioned all have either city council members up for re-election or election and mayors up for re-election and election. So we want to be sure that you vote on November 6th or you can also take part in early voting for your city council candidates. Now, there are lots of places that you can go to find information on candidates. One of the places that you can go is the Minnesota Secretary of State's website, and then go look under elections. There are, there's a lot of information there. You can check if you are registered to vote. If you're not registered to vote, you can register online. You can register in your city halls or in county offices. You can also see who's on your ballot in all of the different races. So there's a lot of information available for you at the Secretary of State site. And after the elections are done, you can find out vote totals to see who won. Now you can go to hometownsource.com and select your city then your local Sun, pay, Sun Post newspaper has information on the local candidates. They'll have information about their background. They'll have information about important issues. You can also get some information the, from the Star Tribune. Go into their website and select candidates from your city. So we want to make sure that you're an informed voter. Take the time to find out a little information to decide which candidates in your city you want to vote for and